unaffiliated voters are the largest demographic in North Carolina. If we unite, we will disrupt the status quo. I'm inviting everyone to critically read each candidate's platform. Look at the issues and don't make this about identity politics. Don't make this about Team Red versus Team Blue. Make your decision based on who you love and what will make their lives thrive. That was Matthew Ho, a Green Party candidate for uh, running for Senate in North Carolina, an Afghanistan war veteran and a former government official. He is hoping to serve the Tar Heel State with a mission to hold the government accountable, fight cli for climate change, protect abortion, uh, fight against climate change rather, <laughs> protect abortion, and get money out of politics. Ho gained notoriety back in 2009 when he stepped down from his government job in protest of the Afghanistan war. Some might peg him for a progressive, but according to Ho, the two-party system we have is harmful. Those aren't mutually exclusive things, of course. He joins us now to expand on that and to tell us more about his campaign. Good morning, Matthew. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me with you. So, you know, I think a lot of people are probably really taken by that campaign ad. It's, it's rare to hear someone, relatively rare at least, to hear someone on the broad left kind of call out identity politics in that express way. Say a little bit more about why you chose to put that in your campaign. Well, we've come across, so for us as a, as a minor party, independent grassroots campaign we have to get out there and talk to people we don't have the money to do the television ads like the democrats and republicans do so for us we have to go and, and literally meet people where they're at and so we go to a lot of events and festivals we did this in the spring we petitioned to get on the ballot we've done it this fall and all across the state you know from murphy to manio as we say here in north carolina uh, you hear the same three issues it, it's housing health care and the effect of the war on drugs, whether it's the mass incarceration piece or the overdose. Uh, mm -hmm. we, have about, we have 12 overdose deaths a day in North Carolina, just to give people an idea of what it's like here. Mm. So you, you continually hear this message over and over again. And when we're out there talking to people, we're, we're not hit with like the spoiler argument. We're not being accused of splitting the vote. Ralph Nader's name doesn't come up. I mean, out of 100 mm. people I talk to, uh, you might come across that one time. Uh, the rest of the folks out there who are normal people who don't live their lives on Twitter, right, yeah. are uh, people who are dealing with the realities of our economy, of our society, of our changing climate, of uh, bipartisan policies, right, that have just, you know, particularly, say, the war on drugs. That's the issue that we really led with a lot because everywhere we're at, we are meeting people who have been affected by it. These are not people who are saying, hey, I just want to go get high in a park. These are people who said the war on drugs destroyed people I love. And, uh, you know, so that's the message we're leading with because that's what's connecting us to voters. And I believe what voters are finding missing uh, in their political choices now. Uh, it, that's wonderful to hear you talking about those issues that obviously that's an issue I care about a lot as a libertarian as well. Mm -hmm. right. um, you know, are you talking to voters about how uh, guessing and gathering what you know your, your views on the subject might be? I assume they're probably pretty close to my own. You know, the, the need for having a less uh, a less milita uh, military response to drug, you know, letting people get medicine they need in a safe way, and then they would be less at risk of of things like fentanyl when they would actually know what they're taking right. because they're not you know doing it surreptitiously, illegally on a black market, etc. Um, I, I feel like that should be a message that would have real. Appeal appeal to people. Oh, absolutely, Robbie. I mean, it's the idea of transitioning from this uh, a law enforcement approach to a public health approach where we stop treating people who have substance abuse and addiction issues as criminals and, and treat them compassionately, you know, as our neighbors, right, as people who need medical care, who need help. Uh, you know, and, and, and it, again, it's both sides of it. You, you see both the mass incarceration piece and the overdose piece that is uh, just really uh, 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 causing such suffering. Uh, and uh, this has been going on for, 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 for decades. And people are tired. Uh, they're worn down. You couple this again with, with the overhead that all Americans are paying for mm -hmm. health care, for education, for housing. Uh, you know, 60% of us live paycheck to paycheck, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is how you see this disaffection, this dismay with the current political system, because people connect the dots. They understand that people in Washington, D.C., people in the state houses, they are the ones that have not only put these policies in place, but have allowed them to continue for decades, you know, to the ruin of tens of millions of American families and communities all across the country.
And how are the, uh, you know, something that so many third party candidates face around um, the country, is, you know, ballot access issues, um, uh, pr you know, problems of, of that nature. You know, what are you facing in terms of that? And, you know, what are you hoping, you know, your, your campaign might achieve uh, in, in terms of, you know, building durable third parties and opportunities for third parties? Well, specifically, Matthew, we talked a couple of months ago about a, an effort to get you kicked off the ballot. And then there was some solidarity there you found with the Libertarian Party, right? Oh, absolutely. We had, we had tremendous amount of cooperation. And, and uh, I've done quite a bit with the Libertarian Party here. Uh, my opponent, Shannon Bray, who's running as a Libertarian candidate for, for uh, North Carolina for the U.S. Senate, I, I've said a number of times, if I wasn't on the ballot, I would vote for the Libertarian. Because Shannon Bray, we agree on a number of issues, such as ending the war on drugs, such as ending corporate subsidies, uh, things such as LGBTQIA rights, uh, those things we agree upon. Uh, but also, too, I understand that Shannon is a person who is not, his, uh, his positions are not motivated by money. They're not motivated by uh, corporate donations. And so he's a man of principle. And that's why I would vote him for him over my Democratic or Republican opponents. But certainly this past year, we had the experience where we had a petition to get on the ballot. We needed 14,000 signatures, we being the North Carolina Green Party. We uh, collected 22,500 signatures. We met all the deadlines, checked all the boxes, and then we went to be certified by the Democratic Party-controlled State Board of Elections. We were told we cannot certify you because we have questions about your petitioning process. No evidence was provided to us. We were allowed no, do, do, no due diligence or no, uh, 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 no ability of, of ours to inspect what they were talking about. And certainly no legal justification was provided to us. And so we had to go to federal court to be on the ballot. And we won in US District Court. We won in federal appeals court. And we also won in state court. And, but those are the reasons we are on the ballot as opposed to what would have happened if we didn't have that wherewithal, if we didn't have the resources to do that, which most independent or minor party campaigns don't have, uh, we would have been off the ballot simply because the party in power, the party that controls the, Demo the, the governor's office, the Democrats, would have just not allowed us on the ballot for no other reason than they had unspecified questions. That's utterly criminal. And the leader of that party, Joe Biden, you know, just gave a speech last night about the importance of maintaining our democracy. democracy. How that's the sole and most important issue facing Americans. Well, you know, take the one step further, actually, the governor here in North Carolina is Roy Cooper, who's head of the Democratic Governors Association, which is the organization that gave, what, about $50 million to the most, uh, uh, most pro-Trump MAGA uh, candidates running in Republican primaries right. this year. So, right, you can see that connection. And mm -hmm. it reminds me of a poll that the New York Times put out this pa uh, last month, October, where they found that the top concern among voters, I think 68% of them, was political corruption. And not specifically the Mar-a-Lago uh, uh, classified document situation, January 6th, uh, what happened with us here in North Carolina, but more the continual uh, corporate capture of government, right? Yeah. The continued buying and selling of politicians by corporations, banks, and the wealthy, that's the political corruption that people are so upset by because that's what translates into, right, th th this suffering because of health care, housing, uh, education costs, the war on drugs, uh, inaction on the climate, uh, on and on and on. Yeah, I, look, I could talk wow. to you for a, a really long time. I, 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 I I think that people should definitely look into your story and definitely follow your campaign, support you if you are, or think about supporting you if they live in North Carolina, because it really is uh, criminal that uh, third party candidates don't get the same kind of airing opportunities to mm. debate publicly, get as much press coverage, et cetera, and certainly and don't have, have these as much structural funding. disadvantages put, yeah. in, put right. in, in their way by uh, our two party yeah. duopoly. Yeah, well, I appreciate you coming on today, Matthew. Thank you very much, Bree and Robbie. I appreciate it. We'll have more rising for you after this.